everybody. Thanks for tuning into Border City Rock Talk, where you get great news, great interviews, great interviewees, and sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you hit the like button, the notification bell, and subscribe to the channel so you get these great interviews. Today, I have former Tesla guitarist Tommy Skeel. How are you doing, Tommy? I'm doing great. How are you doing, man? I'm doing all right, actually. Did I pronounce it right? Because I actually said sketch, because I don't, I mean, I've seen you guys live when you were with Tesla, and I've always admired your guitar playing, but I don't know if I've ever heard anybody pronounce your name. Is it Skio or Sketch? It's Skio. Correct. Yeah. CH is like kind of silent. I yeah. Guess. And that's the kind of funny thing I was thinking about this morning when I was going to talk to you. I was thinking, I never, I've never known the, the English language to have the CH silent. Like you have other letters silent, but. Um, yeah. Oh, man. It's a trip. People screw it up all the time. It's kind what's of the um, origin of that? What, what's the. Your, I believe it's Scottish. Uh, my dad was adopted, so I don't really know what the lineage is, but I believe the name might be Scottish, something like that, but I'm not sure. Okay, right on. Before we go any further with Tommy Skio, just a little uh, commercial break from our sponsor, Spado Potatoes. Anyways, Tommy, so... Um, before we get into what you're doing now, um, everybody's going to be dying to know what you've been up to since your Tesla days. Um, how many years has it been since um, your last um, show? Let's say that, your last show with the guys. Oh, man. Uh, I think that might have been in 2005 or 2006, somewhere around there. Wow. Wow. So that's that's what we're looking at. Uh, 18 years. That's yeah, I've not been with them uh, for a long time now. I mean, I kind of went in and out of that band a lot, you know, but tour, yeah, but this last time has been that, yeah. So you guys haven't, uh, like, I know you're friends with Brian and that, so you haven't got on stage with one of those guys in the Sacramento area or anything? Because you're living out east, right? I don't think I'm going to be going on stage with them or anything no, like no, that. No, no, I, I mean, mean, I don't mean Tesla. Like I mean, band, but it is now, and good luck to them, man. It's all good. Yeah, no, what I meant, Tommy, was because um, your friends uh, with the guys in the band, if um, they've ever said, hey, why don't you come up on stage and they're doing like a side project or something. That's kind of what I meant, but um, you're out east uh, anyways. Uh, no, actually, Brian's been talking about something. So there might be something that me and Brian might do, but I'm not sure if he, that's even going to pan out. But um, he's been talking about something, actually. Right on. Yeah, I interviewed Brian a couple of years ago and uh, he put his... Uh, his book out. It was kind of funny because I liked, um, um, maybe you were part of this. Um, when he went on that, um, when he was losing all the weight, um, and he told me, or he told, he, well, he told me, but it was in the book. Um, somebody coined him the shredded wheat. Oh yeah. That was early on. They started calling him that. <laughs> I think that was fucking hilarious. <laughs> uh, so when you're I think with he had Tall. I think he had a base with shredded that was like a box of shredded wheat or something. I didn't know that part. I just knew that he said he's been, you know, he's he's been up and down with his um with his weight or whatever, you know, that sort of thing, like we all are. And I think he said that he was really giving her and you know doing hard at the gym and something, and they called him shredded wheat. So yeah, yeah, that's true. That's hilarious. So, what's your favorite um? What's it, what song are you most proud of that you uh, wrote or co-wrote with uh, the guys from Tesla? Oh, man. Um, well, I think there was a lot of good ones. I, I, I don't know. I mean, stuff that I just wrote myself, like uh, maybe like uh, Heaven's Trail or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's that's been a pretty good one. Uh, I really like Song and Emotion a lot. Yeah. Were you a big uh, um, Steve Clark fan, obviously? Yeah. Um, that's a great song. I like some of the grittier ones that I've written just on my own, like Had Enough and Solution and, and Action Talk, stuff like that. But co-wrote stuff like uh, Freedom Slaves. It just there's a, a lot of those songs. I was stir, uh, stir It Up. Uh, uh, you know, there's just a lot of great songs there. What was the last album that you played on? Was it the one after Psychotic Supper? Oh, yeah. Um, the last record I made with them was uh, Into the Now. That was a good album, too. I think that one had Mighty Mouse on it. It did. That is a good That is a good record, I think. Yeah, I think it came out great. Yeah, it was definitely... Uh, um, it did much, but it was a good record, yeah. 
I, um, the reason I wanted to get Tommy on uh, was obviously because he's got a new project on we're going to talk about in a second, but I've always been a fan of the twin guitars. And I always, when you left the band, I mean, I like Dave too. He's definitely um, a unique, he's a good player. Um, but you, when you're with Frank, you guys had such a great dynamic. Um, uh, do you, Frank, still talk or anything like that or... I don't. I, I don't know. You know, he, he mentions me here and there, but no, we don't really talk much. I talk to Brian and talk to Jeff every now and then. And I don't know what, even why that is, but we know we haven't. And, um, but we do have some kind of crazy chemistry and, yeah. you know, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on. I mean, I've, I've not really seen them live or what's going on. I could tell on the records that it's a little bit of a different animal now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think um, just kind of what I brought to it, I didn't even realize until I left kind of what I had brought oh, to man. that. Yeah. So and it's obvious after I left what's missing. So, you know, I, but, you know, they're doing their thing now and I'm sure live it's cool and whatever. And they it's it's all good, you know. Yeah. Um, before I move on. Um, yeah. I used to put you in the same kind of demographic as one would put Queensryche, um, like a diehard fan like myself. Um Mike Wilton and uh, Chris DeGarmo, when he left, it was for a guitar player, it's noticeable. Like, I think they have Mike Stone. I think that's his name. I, I agree totally with that. Um, I just heard them, saw them. Well, I heard them. I didn't watch them. I was backstage, but we did a festival just recently at the Rock Timber Festival there. Mm -hmm. uh, they sounded really, really good, but I, I've noticed that too. That man, there's certain chemistry between certain, not always, but I definitely, me and Frank, I, there's just something with me and him together that just happens. That's pretty crazy. And yeah. you know what? Me and Frank never talked about anything. We we just, I mean, we just did. You know what I mean? We just did. We just played, and that's what kind of happened. It's and it's really great for just that reason. I think. The chemistry was definitely there. Yeah, I, I guess you guys all grew up in the Sacramento area. Yep, yep. And I'm sure, you know, and I don't know why that happens or who contributes what to make that happen, but things do happen like that. And I did notice it with Queens right too. That's funny you mentioned that. Well, and the unique thing that you brought up that's um, very, very true and honest is sometimes there'd be a great band that has a great singer, but if they leave, they can replace the band. It's not often, but I mean, um, let's say let's say Van Halen, when they did that with Sammy, you can make a case that, yeah, I mean, there's nothing changed. It's a great dynamic. But with Queensryche, I'm finding I'm more of a fan of watching Jeff Tate than the Queensryche show. Nothing against Queensryche, but I think when Queensryche lost Jeff, to me anyways, it lost some identity. And I've seen Queensryche... Oh. Jeff I mean, there's two there's two original guys in the band right now. It's just it's a little weird. Yeah, way. it's just it's Michael just, and um, it's that's pretty tough, you know. I mean, that's I don't know. That's, I would think that's tough, but I get it. Yeah, it's just like uh, quite right these days. Like um, Carlos, I mean, I would have thought that they would have been bugging them, and I asked them in an interview. I said, "Have you been contacted by them to come and play with them?" Because Rudy's back now, right? And to me, Quiet Riot won't be the same without, let's say, Carlos, Rudy, or obviously Kevin, right? So, I mean, it's it's a weird thing. I mean, you know, and and I think really, a, I, I don't not maybe not any band, but a, definitely a band like Tesla. I think you take out any one of the cats that were in Tesla, and it would make it a different animal. I mean, Brian's like a very unique player too, and and the reason why me and Brian are kind of unique players that way is because we grew up not really knowing we were not like musical geniuses or nothing we just kind of play from the heart and it really makes for a uh, unique style sometimes and that's why i think if you know you replace any of us it would be a different animal well, Especially just, and in the band right now there's actually another replacement with steve uh, brown yeah yeah on drums so it's funny I actually i've seen the tesla website and it hey. doesn't uh it lists the four members and then what's it that I've seen the Tesla website, and it's quite unique how the management is doing that. They don't uh, list Steve as a member. Like, they'll list the, the four other players. But because Troy is still technically part of the band, and it's probably a business decision, if he wants to come back, it's still contractual that he would. I have, so. no, what the, I have no idea what's going on there at all. Yeah, I think he's just taking some time off. So anyways, you were in a resist, um, bite and resist, I'm sorry. Resist. Oh, resist. 
Hi, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, and um, now you're in a bad marriage. Correct. Um, have you tried counseling or doctor? <laughs> hey, oh, told you, house girl went in there. So, Tom, yeah, well, this resistant bite turned out to be a bad marriage. So there you go. Hey, I like that. I like that. You're a thinker. And it's only 11 o'clock in the morning. So I'm doing good. I wait and bake too. I got my medical marijuana card yesterday. <laughs> there you go, man. <laughs> yeah. So tell us about um, bad marriage. There's a, there's an EP out and Jeff actually sings on three of the songs. Brian produced it. And you're telling me a second ago that there's, um, you're working on some new material. Totally dude. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's been great, man. Those guys are great great group of guys and really talented the way we do stuff right out of the guy's house and um yeah we got like already about three or four songs that i've that i co-wrote with them and and i'm playing on the songs playing some solos and just it's been a lot of fun and i think it's going to be a cool little record we're putting together you have some shows coming up um i think they're in the on the east coast yeah, we've been doing a lot of shows, and there is some news about some shows coming up next year. I don't, I don't think I can spill the beans about it because it's not confirmed or something. But we are doing a tour at the beginning of next year. That's going to be exciting and fun. Would that coincide with an album release, or is it too far um, away to um, to jump? Well, we might release a song how they do on the internet or whatever these days. But I'm, I'm yeah. not sure. I doubt that because I don't know if we'll have the whole thing together by then. I'm not sure. Right. Um, I was asking you a second ago about your guitar. You're playing, um, what, what brand of guitar is it? And it's got a Firebird kind of uh, a body, and I'll, I'll show that uh, on the screen. Uh, they're called AXN, and you can look, you know, check them out on the internet or on face or on, uh, well, Facebook or, uh, uh, Reverb and eBay. You can find them for sale. But anyway, just great guitars. This guy, Johnny's making me, and, uh, I love them. I've been playing them exclusively with Bad Marriage. That's all I've been playing as far as live, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, they're great. I love them. You know, uh, Floyd Rose, one pickup, one knob type type deal. And he relics them and makes them look really kind of, they look great, right? Yeah, no, I I like it. It's quite a unique uh, guitar. Yeah, everyone, everyone that sees them asks me about them and trips on them. They really, and they play and sound great too. So it's just the, the whole package is there and I love them, yeah. Check them out, man. AXN Guitars, killer. Right on. So between um, the time um, you left Tesla and be before you started recording and playing again, um, what were you doing in that in that time? Were you just taking time to just relax? Did you have a, another kind of side project or hobby, or what were you doing? Uh, I did do a couple of, like, I guess you would call them solo records. Right, right. And they were fairly awful. I mean, you know, I, I sang on them or yelled on them or whatever I did. And when I look back on them, they're pretty terrible, really. So I did those. I produced some acts and did some stuff like that. And I was up to a lot of no good as well. I mean, you know, I just, I kind of languished away some years there. But uh, join the about, club, man. We're all in the same. Yeah, place. well. About five years ago, I, you know, I started talking to Dave uh, Parks, my friend, a drummer, and he, me and him wanted to put together a band, and that's how Resistant Bite happened, and that kind of threw me into the whole game again, and uh, been here ever since. Right on. So who, uh, who are your guitar influences and stuff? I would say a big one was like Michael Shanker from UFO. Mm-hmm. Uh, the guys from Judas Priest were pretty huge for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I say that about all of them, about it's more the attitude. I'm not a real technical player. I mean, I can do some stuff. And, of course, I've learned a lot from the guitar players. But Eddie Van Halen was a huge influence on me, although I play nothing like him. He's just, you know, the attitude of that playing. Um, Pat Travers, ACDC stuff. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff. Rush, that Alex Lifeson guy. Yeah. Um, just a lot of the, that was a lot of the stuff that I would kind of go to, man. Yeah. Right on. So be, before I let you go, um, other than Rush, who would you say if you had to pick a favorite Canadian band or guitar player or artist? I would say Max Webster. Oh, Kim Mitchell. Or Yeah, Kim Mitchell. Well, he was the band was called Max Webster. Yeah, Kim is a great guitar player. Yeah. I love him, man, and great songs. And I have a couple of those records from way back when. I 
you used to look, get into it, man. They're great, man. Right on. Um, what is the opposite of unsubscribe? What's that? What's the opposite of unsubscribe? Subscribe. All right. Everybody do as uh, guitar legend Tommy Skeel says and subscribe to the channel for these great interviews. <laughs> Make sure you go to the Bad Marriage uh, website and check out their stuff and their merch. Yep. Support the band yep. when they're on the road. And uh, yeah, is there anything else you'd like to tell your fans, uh, Tommy? Uh, yeah, rock and roll and metal forever, man. <laughs>